And you can't have small groups of people, individuals changing that at all and making it benefit them. You can't, so this is what's beautiful. This Bitcoin. is really, Bitcoin doesn't you know, care. It's so yeah. unique in human history. It's unique. Yeah. Bitcoin doesn't care about you. Yeah. Meaning that Bitcoin treats the, the richest person in the world the same as the poorest person in the world because both are playing on the same playing field now. And mm -hmm. that is just beautiful. Welcome to the show, Prince Philip. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank How you very much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me, I mean, thank you for calling me Prince Philip. You can call me Philip. Philip, thank thanks you. so much. Yeah. Hey, thank, you for, thank you very much for having me on this. Well, my pleasure. I, I watched uh, um, and listened to that interview. I listened to that interview with uh, Daniel Prince, another <laughs> Prince and, um, fr um, and from UK. And it was an amazing discussion. So I would r r actually recommend everyone to, to listen to that sort of as an introduction to our talk, because I don't want to like go into all the aspects you already talked about and want to use the time as efficiently as possible. But still, I would still uh, ask you to give like a brief like background like um where you come from what's the whole story about you know uh but your sort of royal ancestry and uh your connection to bitcoin maybe your path okay um so i was born in america in in fairfax virginia that's near washington dc um my parents my father is um Crown Prince Alexander, of, well, Crown Prince Alexander of Yugoslavia, but now Crown Prince Alexander of Serbia. My mother is it's uh, Mar uh, Princess Maria da Gloria Orleans Bragancia, and that's of the Brazilian royal, imperial royal family. Uh, they met they met in, uh, in 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 Portugal in, in many years ago, but uh, they had my older brother first in 1980 in Chicago, and then me and my twin brother in 1982 in in, in Washington. But sadly, a couple of years or so after after having my my twin and I uh, having yeah my, my twin and I we my parents uh, separated and we moved with my, my my mother to Sevilla, Spain. Um, we lived there, my brothers and I, for a few years um, till we we're about three or f five or about four or five 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 years old, and my my mother remar remarried to. Um, El, uh, the Duke of Segorbe, El Duque de Segorbe, and my father remarried as well to uh, a Greek American lady. And there was a decision made that my twin and I, my brother, my sorry, my brothers and I had to move to to London to be with my father. And that was very tough because being separated from your mother from such a young age was very difficult. Yes, we did go back to Spain during holidays to go see my mother, but. It, it was very it was a very tough experience um, as you know that Serbia well Yugoslavia at the time did not have a monarchy it was dissolved well I should say dissolved it was um, it was it was take, uh, taken down by the communists by Tito and so it's a very complicated story during the second world war but you know 1943 was when it was basically handed over to Tito and my grandfather King Peter II was the last uh, reigning king of Yugoslavia Serbia um, now there is no monarchy in Serbia but the idea of monarchy still lives very strong. The Kara Georgievich dynasty is known by most people here. It's 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 a very important dynasty because it was created in the in the early 18, very early eighteen hundreds when my great 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 so four great grandfather Kara George his name was he was from very humble backgrounds but he managed to uh, to make a name out of himself he becoming a uh, an affluent uh, livestock trader merchant and he was also a general in the army and during those years for a few centuries serbia was under ottoman empire rule and so serbs were essentially i guess you could say they were servant slaves to uh, to the ottomans and obviously people didn't over people didn't like that so <laughs> he led the first uprising against the ottoman empire for serbia for the serbians he was a very charismatic figure very tall um yeah i mean i think he was like 
people said he was like almost, almost like over two meters, like two meters, 10, 10 centimeters. So he was a big, 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 uh, big, big man, very strong. And he led that first uprising that, um, that basically led to Serbia becoming independent, its own state again, during the Ottoman Empire rule. There was a subsequent um, uprising by the Obrenovich family, family as well. They were another dynasty during the time. Serbia went through two dynasties. Uh, there was change from Kara Georgia in the big Kara Georgievich is the son of Kara Georgia from the beginning to the Obrenovich and Obrenovich were not they weren't very popular and sadly there was a regicide. They were actually killed off. Um, but then in, in the in nine, early 1900, in the 1903, my great great grandfather King Peter the First came came to came to power and was uh, a very very famous very popular king during Serb um, during the uh, early 1900s. He was very key in in actually moving Serbia away from the control as well, the, uh, the system of the Austrian-Hungarian Germans, and he wanted to deal more with the, um, with, the, with the West, I guess, but also including Russia, uh, with the Anglosphere, I guess, but including Russia. And this was, didn't sit too kindly with the, the, uh, with, uh, the, the Austrian-Hungarians, and so they imposed sanctions on Serbia. But he managed to transition all of Serb commerce to his new partners and did that quite quickly in a, in a matter of a few years. And he became very popular and he built very strong um, trade relations with these, uh, with his new partners, with his new, um, his new alliance and made Serbia very prosperous during the time. Um, his son was King Peter, the I'm sorry, King Alexander the first. And he was the one who, created Yugoslavia. First, it was the kingdom of the Croats, um, Ser Serbians, Croats, and Slovenes, but later incorporated the, uh, the six na other, other nations that people are, are known right, right now. They're they are independent nations. Uh, he did this in order to protect the region from Austro-Hungarian control and threat and other threats during the time. This was during the, uh, in the, the 20s during the twenties and going into the thirties. Sadly, he was assassinated in 1934. This was one of the first, this was the first assassination caught on camera. Um, my grandfather at the time was too young to become king. He was only 13 years old. So King Alexander's the first cousin, King Paul, the King Paul, I mean, sorry, uh, Prince Paul became the regent king. Um, but when my grandfather became of age, in 1941, he he became the king, King Peter the First, but that that was at a very hard time during the Second World War, and then communism happened. Serbia was went through. I said there were fake years of communism during. I mean, we talk about this afterwards. So just to talk about the royalty and and we were exiled completely from. We were exiled from, from, from Yugoslavia at the time. All the family, they were taken, their, 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 their property was taken, their citizenship was taken. They were all made enemy of the state. My father was made an enemy of the state at like only two years old. I mean, it was, <laughs> it's, it's all crazy really, but. Uh, Without yeah. any restitution, uh, Philip? No, that still is a problem today. That was still some, something that we're fighting for. Uh -huh. Lots. We have a lot of, lot of. Uh, I mean, we, we had, or we should have, some very, some very nice properties that were built by our, our ancestors that was, should be in our possession, and, and then loads, of, including loads of arts and books and and beautiful, um, beautiful properties. And some of it went it disappeared. Some of it might never be found. But there are there, there's there's one still out there. With regards to the palace, there's two palaces in the same in the same grounds compound in Belgrade. Those are still, of course, owned by the state. Well, I should say um, they are uh, taken care of by the state. My father lives there at the moment with my stepmother. And they, they are still not given back to us, but that's pretty much the only property that there's some sort of use of. But to this day, uh, we haven't really been given anything back at all, and we're fighting for it. So, um, 
Philip, so, you know, I'm not an expert on, on the history, you know, of Serbia or former Yugoslavia, but it's a fascinating story. I mean, the only thing I always encountered is the, you know, this, this, the war crimes that have been, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not only uh, perpetrated on, on Serbia or former Yugoslavia in, is that the year 1999? Could you talk about yeah. that? Do you want to talk about this? I mean, because it's, I find it furiously, I mean, well, maddening to be honest with you, I mean, because it's, it's still ongoing, you know, I mean, the whole propaganda, the, the psyops, the, the war, war crimes, the whole military financial complex. Yes, of course. It's a big story, but I think maybe you can give a big, bigger picture. Like, yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, it's, this is all really the, the, the problem with, um, so the socialist years, the communist years, I should say, was, uh, were, there was deemed Serbia thought Yugoslavia thought they were they were they were very prosperous, but actually, it was fake. They were actually propped up by a lot of American money. The Americans wanted to keep Yugoslavia alive, support Tito essentially to uh, to have that sort of leverage state with Russia, because obviously there was an alliance between Tito and and Stalin during the time as well. But Serbia, sorry, I should say Yugoslavia. Uh, after, yeah, so they. How to put it? Look, I'll. So, so when um, there was yeah, I this is a good way to put it. So there was a, there was the Warsaw Pact, which was a, which was a, a a sort of retaliation to NATO forming, in the, I think it was in the fifties or sixties, but anyway, it was around then. And that Warsaw Pact actually fell through, and that was meant to incorporate the countries that were not NATO, so Russia, uh, Poland, uh, and, all, uh, and all those satellite states around Russia. Yugoslavia was not part of that Warsaw Pact. They were sort of somewhat neutral. But when that, fell th when that Warsaw Pact fell through, it didn't work, then the Americans and the Brits thought that you, propping up Yugoslavia was not really of any use anymore. So the funding sort of dried up and Serbia started, fell further into, into financial crisis. They started borrowing money from the IMF and running up huge deficits. And then when Tito died in 1980, he had no succession planning, which was one of the problems of a dictatorship and not one of the problems of a monarchy, <laughs> is that... Yugoslavia started to disintegrate and which led to the bloody wars in the 90s. So 1992 was the first, were the, were the first big really bloody wars but, you know, that happened in um, mainly around Sarajevo, Bosnia-Herzegovina area. And the world wanted to, I say the world, the West wanted to demonize Serbia and they but didn't really didn't want to tell the world that they, they want to teach uh, teach the world that there was actually two two sides of the story. I'm not going to get into the complex bit over here, but the West was was meddling with that and saying that the Muslims in 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 the in Bosnia in Bosnia area were uh, were the ones who were being I say given the hard time, but actually it was both both ways round. I mean, it was horrible years of what they went through it was the worst probably some of the worst crimes in europe in uh, war crimes in europe since the second world war i, I believe then what that then led to uh, with with countries like uh, sorry um, se the separation of of croatia happened quite peacefully but then bosnia was bloody uh, slovenia was quite peaceful and then we got to the point where it came to 1999 milosevic was in power and America decided to, uh, well, I say NATO with America, decided to flex their muscles and oil the war, war machine, as you spoke about. And they bombed Belgrade, Serbia, to, to smithereens almost. It was for no real reason. Yes, they said to get rid of Milosevic. Milosevic, horrible person he should have gotten rid of. But they, that could have happened within the country and not with the help of, let's say, inverted brackets help of, the, uh, of NATO. Because the damage done from that was horrible. It was just in a, in a second, people weren't warned at all. And the next thing you know, bombs everywhere. And to this day, you speak to people uh, where I live in Belgrade, and people are still in shock from that almost. So the trust with the Americans and the West was, was further um, distant. <laughs> uh, and that's that. 
and you can see that's sort of hap- that's happening now in uh, in Ukraine and, and Ru- with with Russia. <laughs> you know, we don't blame the Russians for what they're doing because the, the Americans are, are putting are putting their 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 forces or you know they're uh, putting trying to put one of Ukraine's one of Russia's country. Uh, I say quite Russia's countries where a lot what a lot of Russians are to make into NATO country when Ra- when Russia actually warned the U.S. That if they did that, they would be there will be consequences. But anyway, let's that's another story. Um, so yeah, where was I? Was <clears throat> that uh, the, the the bombings here in in in, in Belgrade and Serbia, and and the wars over here had horrible consequence. And on top of that, there was no help coming from the West afterwards. It was just bomb and get out. And then that was 1999, and what happens in 2001, 9/11, and then all the focus on back to the Middle East and Afghanistan. So, yeah, there we go. It was, it was just business, really, and they got to test out a lot of their new play, uh, new equipment here as well, depleted uraniums and cluster bombings and oh god knows what oh jesus yeah. yeah yeah i remember i remember yeah you know uh, the reason that i think it's important to talk about it because you know uh, i'm not really investigative journalist in, in this kind of topic and and there are really brilliant people out there who can even give a bigger context you know yes but i think the reason you know my my podcast of course focused on bitcoin and the, the reason i'm asking you is because i want to talk to you about bitcoin because <laughs> Uh, the experiences, the history, the whole pain and suffering that the people of Serbia or former Yugoslavia have gone through, it forms somehow, it 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 makes you t- to that what you are today, you know, uh, or that person, that human being. So, and since I, you know, I listened to you on, on Daniel Prince podcast and where you said you sort of uh, have this calling or this, or you feel, I, th- I mean, that's how I interpret it. Uh, you feel this calling or mission ethos uh, to sort of orange orange pill or uh, educate uh, and inform and inspire the um, you know the people of um, mm-hmm. of your country. So um, uh, what I want to know is like what would be what is the pain what are the pain points what are like what could be the psychological emotional things that we that you could somehow uh, address to to open up to inspire to make people more curious educate them inform them and then eventually uh, let them take the action you know it doesn't necessarily you know need to be like el salvador you know going like mm-hmm. legal tender this is like too grand like too big of a dream but yes. hey who knows i mean yes, everything yes. is converging mm-hmm. all the parameters the conditions everything is like it's madness what, what what's going on geopolitically politically macroeconomically i mean i don't have to tell you yours, mm-hmm. yourself in the financial uh, division so I don't know where where do you want to start it off. Like, what, what is your calling? What, what, well, what's here's, your path? here's the thing. I've always, I mean, I've lived in London most of my life. I I, I studied. I was at university in London. And I worked in London afterwards. I did go to one year to study in Spain. One year, and also I studied in Switzerland for one year. But and I worked in, in Cyprus for almost two years. But then the rest of my of my of my professional life has been in. Um, in London, and I've been working for no, oh, just uh, nine years actually for an asset manager. And I look, I I thought I understood the world <laughs> when uh, when I when I start when I was working in my in my earlier in, let's say in my earlier days. And as you as you grow older, you see there's 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 things happening around the world that just don't make sense. That just don't add up. And I think this is something very common with a lot of Bitcoiners. Um, so I, when it was, when, look, I got into Bitcoin in 2017 and I knew what it meant. I knew about the inflation issue and, and all that. And it was fantastic, but I didn't, I wasn't a maxi then. I got, I got distracted by, by, um, by, the, by shit coins. Like most people do. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all went through this pain. Yeah. yeah but it's, it's, it's part of the learning process. Um, yeah. So, a few so I when Corona hits, I knew something was not right with when Corona hits. It's just things didn't add up there. Uh, but then, it, I for me, in my personal experience, it was it, it was great because I was working. I was able to then work at home and spend more time with my with my with my son and wife. And then I was working from home, and I was always thinking before that when I'm going to move back to Serbia. My wife is Serbian. My son was born in, in Belgrade. We went we went there to make sure he was born there, and he's big Serbian. 
fluent Serbian because his mother speaks it to him. So it's fantastic. And we're thinking, you know, one that we should move back to Serbia soon. And I've always wanted to move back to Serbia, but I didn't know how and when and, and, and what, what I'll do there. But the fact that I was working from home online, I was like, hey, this is my chance. So I told work, I'm moving to Serbia. This is early days of lockdowns. Um, they were quite happy to accept it. They didn't think it was the lockdowns and all that the problems were going to last very long. So I moved to Serbia. And soon after I moved to Serbia, I think my, my philosophy has changed a little bit. When you spend more time here, put it this way, I was more brainwashed in, in the UK. Um, when I spend more time here, you open, your mind becomes more open. I've always thought I had a very open mind to things. You know, I can change opinions quite easily if something makes more sense. But this is the case over here in Serbia. Things start to really make more sense over here because the people here have gone through, I guess, what the West is going through right now in a different way. But it, there's, there's repetitions, there's cycles that... The people here know what propaganda is. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. They've yeah, they know. <laughs> yeah. They've lived through it. They've lived yeah. through it through through the communist years, and then they lived through hard times of the of the of the wars of the nineties as well. So they know what 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 was going on, and the, um, they know what. Oh, look, they've had a hard time here, so they're they're switched on. Not saying that everyone is, but most people are switched on, and you can have a much more open conversation here than people with the West. Um, and this is something that was really, I mean, it was, it was great. It was, I, I hope it was an eye opener for me. And that's when I started to study more about Bitcoin and I realized, oh my God, this is, uh, <laughs> this is it. This, this solves everything. This is incredible. And that's why I figured out Bitcoin. And that's when, I mean, moving on to Serbia and, 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 and its views on Bitcoin is, not everyone here is into Bitcoin, of course, like like the rest of the world. But uh, I'd say the, the more the open mindedness of people here is is a good thing, and that will help the education of Bitcoin. Look, because Serbs know what inflation is. In the nineties, they had hyperinflation. You know, they 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 know what real inflation, what what serious inflation, hyperinflation is. So that's that done. So that's not not too many people to convince there. What's the current uh, inflation rate? If I'm sorry to interrupt you, what's the current inflation rate? You know what I. Definitely, I think it's definitely in the. I think it's about the about six or seven. I don't quote me. Don't quote me. But I've noticed since I've moved here and since I've been living here for a year, just over, just over a year and a half, that things are going up just by just by living here. But to tell the truth, I haven't been keeping tabs of the actual current inflation here. Mate, something to look up on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Where were we? Yeah, about <laughs> the inflation rate. Because I think it's important because I think it's the, you know, the, that's why I'm, I want to talk about the pain point. Like, what are the pain point? Because, you know, as you said, people that have gone through this, they, they know exactly what propaganda is, the, the brainwashing, the psyops, the, you know, uh, and especially the inflation rate, you know, the, the debasement of, of currencies. So they know what, what existential, you know, uh, suffering is. And that's why I think Bitcoin is, is would be mm -hmm. so easy to, you know, to, to introduce uh, to more and more people. Yes, that, that's it. As, as, you, as you perfectly described over there, that, it, yeah, it's people here. So another thing about Serbs in general is, you know, you've, everyone's heard of Nikola Tesla because that's, that's because Nikola <laughs> Tesla is a brilliant, mind, yeah. <laughs> a brilliant mind, and you get a lot of brilliant minds in Serbia. A lot of, a lot of scientific, mathematical brains here. So the technical side of Bitcoin will be understood by a lot of people here. I mean, there's talks about trying to make Serbia more, uh, more open to, uh, to, um, um, to sort of startups for, 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 uh, for, for, for technology startups and things like that. But. Uh, but at the same time, why not make make uh, you know uh, work on Bitcoin development projects here as well, uh, and anything anything Bitcoin really serves. I I really think that Serbs will be open to it. Of course, there are the older generation which are not so tech savvy, and here's the other thing: so the younger generation are the I say the millennial group and and Gen and Gen Zs in general are tech savvy, and they'll they'll be ones to quick understand it. But the older older people. You know, you don't. You, they're not really on Twitter much, <laughs> so they uh, they're not on Twitter. They're not they're not really much on social media too often and stuff. So uh, they don't really. Uh, they they're just not very not very computer um, 
uh, literate, and that's going to be a bit of an issue. But that's, that, I mean, that's not the case. I mean, that's the, I'm guessing that's the same case in places like El Salvador, where they have they have issues with the older generation. But everyone do, here does have a smartphone, and you can make a wallet very easy to use. You can you can make it just a couple of pushes of a button, and there it is. Okay, and you know, there's there, obviously there's some issues with security in that, but that will be that will come that will become stronger with time. Um. So yeah, I think Serbia is a very good as a potential place for for Bitcoin adoption. Okay, but the other obstacle in in Serbia right now is the current um, the current government we have. There's actually elections happening tomorrow, general elections, but it's pretty much predicted that the current president, who's been the president since 2012, he's a strong man, will will win this. He's managed over over his rule managed to destroy what's say destroy it. He's managed to weaken the, the the opposition a lot. He he has a con- good control over the media. So Serbia is going through another sort of say it's not sire, but it's it's going through, I guess strongman strongman tactics, um, and he's very smart. And I don't think a Bitcoin adoption will, will <laughs> sounds very good to him, so, <laughs> but. Put it this way: If people understand that Bitcoin fixes situations like this, then they will uh, they will start to move forward, uh, move closer to it. I will I will do my best to educate people here. I'm opening up a foundation that will work on on local projects. Firstly, on environmental issues. You know, we've had issues with uh, river pollution. With uh, recently, there was uh, there's this issue going on with um, going on with. Rio Tinto, they want to mine lithium in, in Serbia and destroy some beautiful um, land, uh, uh, greener uh, landscape in, um, in, in the countryside of Serbia. And this is to make electric cars. I, I don't, <laughs> I won't go down that route, but I'm not the biggest fan of electric cars. I think that doesn't really solve the world's problems. <laughs> um, and, and obviously that money was not, was not going to really stay in Serbia. It's going to go back into Rio Tinto's project and 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 pockets and it will circulate the you know with it will go back into the pockets of the globalist so there's things over here i want to work on is is yeah those environmental issues and social maybe it's working some social issues but also work with uh with uh cultural heritage mm-hmm. and which is to do with uh, protecting of old buildings there they're destroying old buildings here, like on our road where we live. There's uh, there's a few nice villas here, and one of them very recently was just taken down because someone went buys it for uh, for for not. I mean, it's quite expensive, but for him, it's it's a good deal. He buys it. He then destroys a beautiful villa, and then builds a high rise flat um, uh, building or flats over there just for for generating income. That just brings more congestion to the area, and it. Just destroys the beautiful, the beautiful architecture on it on uh, in, mm. in parts of Belgrade and things like that are are pressing issues in Serbia. Yeah. So I'm going to work on that. Then on the side as well. I would say on the side, I'm not. I'm going to have the Bitcoin education page. Awesome. And I will. Yeah, I will try to teach people. So it's a bit, I guess, a bit like what uh, Michael Saylor's done with Hope.com, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Make it make it in Serbian. I think there are some good videos in Serbian there uh, as well. Uh, if not, we can make some. And a then I will. What is, what is, want you could to... organize a Bitcoin conference. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was thinking that as well. Make a Bitcoin conference. Yeah, I was thinking that. I mean, it wouldn't be so far for us. Even uh, you know, our our daughter is like fifteen months old. We could even you know travel to. I mean, we would love to. You know, we have so many friends from from uh, Croatia, from Serbia, and it's really fascinating to, to hear their experiences, their testimonials, their knowledge. You know about what's going on. So. Um, uh, look, um, you know, I've been talking to, uh, you know, you know, probably Jeff Bruce and uh, maybe, you know, we've heard Samson Mao of a former, uh, um, you know, CSO, I think, at, at Blockstream, yep. but now yes. he's sort of the appointed ambassador. Excellent, yes. Yep. Bitcoin adoption. So I'm I'm a huge believer and I trust yes, really yes. in the power of, of you, you know, you said the word, you know, localism or local, you know, uh, uh, circular economy. That's what actually Samson Mao five years ago, four years ago, predicted there yes, would be it. somehow mass adoption coming on a retail level. So, 
you know, and and um, I mean, with a deflationary currency, a, a cur you know, a money that is appreciates exponentially in purchasing power. I mean, what else would what could we want? You know, a, a money that is immutable, you know, not confiscatable, totally distributed and decentralized. I mean, what else would we want, right? Yeah, correct. Um, no, and definitely come to come to Serbia in the region. It's so beautiful. There's a lot of t beautiful tourism um, to do over here. Uh, it's 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 a great place. So hosting a Bitcoin conference here would be would, would be great. Um, yes, as you said, you know, um, talking about Bitcoin adoption, legal tender, and issues like that. I mean, that's one I'll, I'll, one thing I'll be trying to work towards as well. But that's through the education. But as well, you know, work with maybe come up with projects over here. Find some people to to work with to to start up uh, Bitcoin pension schemes, to um, uh, to try and get Bitcoins on 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 companies' reserves, assets on on just even on smaller businesses to try and get Bitcoin on on their on their on their on their treasuries as well. I say treasuries for the bigger companies on their in their accounts as well, and. And myself, I want to. I would make, made, would like to one day uh, be full time Bitcoin. I mean, that's that's where I see my calling. What about Bitcoin mining? I mean, does this uh, former Yugoslavia or Serbia has like any kind of? There is, yeah. there is happening. Um, unconfirmed, but I know that there's some some mining happening down near Kosovo, and I think it's done by the government because yeah, they're getting energy for 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 free there. But apart from that, I can't comment about uh, how mining there. I know there are miners out there. I've I've not haven't met any, but I've I met people who know miners. So there's there's mining happening in, in Serbia. Of course, I mean what there's mining you, happening all over the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> what about the issuance of bonds? I mean, you know, like well, sorry, going back. So um, yeah. you know what I want to talk to you about is uh, do you do you could you imagine like the issuance of bonds like not you know sort of similar to volcano bonds in, in El Salvador. Uh, you know, for the, because I mean, he, you know, I think this concept of free private cities, you know, I've been talking also to Peter Young and, and Titus Gable, of free, the, who created the concept of free private cities. And now, you know, the Bitcoin city, the whole infrastructure is being built, at least let's say in the long term, in the next, whatever, four or five years, I think it's, it could be really, uh, uh, I mean, Samson Mao actually also talked about it a lot, like how these cities could look like. And I think this is the, you know, the power of regional local circular economies that's going to prosper and blossom and hey i mean that would be like a, that's a beautiful vision you know i see um it is it is a great vision and i i i'm i think the, these bitcoin bongs are fantastic i uh, yeah i can see the problem people having them that they're closely linked to the government and bitcoin is not about that but it's i think it's just part of the process of getting people more more, more on board on bitcoin and helping to, to build the infrastructure around it I mean, over here, for example, here in Serbia, if there was a Bitcoin bond, how I would structure it would be, would be, I mean, similar to the big volcano bond is in, it would, um, you know, you would, you would obviously uh, spend a good portion of it in actually in, into direct in, in, into Bitcoin itself. But then with the, with the rest of it, you would buy, I mean, you would uh, help. So Serbia has, uh, has a, a, um, its energies, uh, electricity comes from a lot of coal sources. And it's, as you know, it's quite dirty and it, and it creates a lot of air pollution. So I would, I would work to, you know, to work towards trying to move away from coal into more uh, to cleaner energies. But we have some oil here like that, that could work. There's some gas as well that could work as well. And there's some good hydroelectric uh, 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 potential places over here as well. And that will, you know, for infrastructure around that and create new places for energy. And as we all very know that Bitcoin is not only just a monetary revolution, it's an energy one too. So it would just help to secure the uh, service electrical grid over here. And that's one thing. It would, it would just, yeah, it would, be, it would be a plus for everyone, a net net plus for everyone. Yeah, and even even if you use coal, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I trust in the power of technological innovation. <laughs> and I think... Yeah. You know, let's let's just say, you know, yeah, we can't like you know uh, get rid of the environmental pollution. That's a huge concern because this is the real concern, not this whole mm -hmm. CO2, CO2. Pulse. No, no, that's not no. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know, you know, Safed and Amos talks uh, very uh, deeply and and and, and uh, comprehensively. Of course. 
who can we talked about it <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah, it's like ranting about it and it's, it's totally right you know it's a huge uh, fraud and, and 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 hoax but hey you can't say that too loud so but anyway i'll say it anyway but i think you know with technological innovation i think we can minimize at least you know the the impact of this environmental pollution well, even if you use i mean you can find ways i know there's ways of of, of filtering coal and things like that but uh it's i think it's just good to try and get uh, to try and move away because coal i mean it is dirty and, and it, over here you can feel the air pollution in belgrade that's one problem if the wind if there's no wind and the air is still you can feel it or if the wind is blowing slightly in the wrong direction you can really feel it um so it's that's not great for kids especially for for, for lung development and things and things like that so but if, if it's the only energy source that we have to we have to live with it that's fine but let's try and make it as clean as possible and I know there's issues over here with regulations in terms of putting the right uh, filters on them. And because some companies are now not owned by EU or American companies, that they don't have to be regulated, so they don't have to uh, uh, service the, the 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 filters that are on the on the on the chimneys. Um, I mean, that's that's one of the one of the only things that the EU does well <laughs> is maybe with that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan. But we can we can. With a Bitcoin bond, where you could pay for that sort of infrastructure to make coal cleaner. I would like to drive away from coal altogether, but if we can make it clean as possible, I'm for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you also about the media. I mean, if if it, would you have the possibility? I mean, you know, we have to mention again, you know, this this amazing uh, show that you were on and that clip that went mm -hmm. totally viral. Um, I'm not even sure what's the what's the show called. Is it? Uh, it's the Ivan Ivanovic show. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Vecchia sa that? Ivan Ivanovic. That's, yeah, that's uh, yeah. evening. The e evening with Ivan Ivanovic. Yeah, I tried to go through the whole through the whole show because it's like partially you speak like in what's it Serbian Croatian. And yeah. So that was a great thing that we that we managed to sort out. Firstly, I have to big big thank you to Ivan Ivanovic for having us on this show. Mm -hmm. He saw. The reason he had us on the show was okay, he has the biggest the biggest talk show in Serbia. He, it's like I guess it, in America it would be the equivalent of the Saturday Night Live or something. So he was following us on Twitter uh, since I moved back to Serbia, and he was very happy with what he saw. And I, I guess he I mean, he's also quite anti government of the government over here. So <laughs> it's pretty obvious. It's. <laughs> They're really out for him, and so he's he's been very open about against them, which is which is great because he has he has balls, and and we like that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so he had us on the show. He actually when he invited us to the show, we're like, wow, that's amazing. So we talked to him about. So we we met with him a few days before, and he said, you know, I understand about your my Serbian is not very very good yet. He says, don't worry, we can have subtitles and just be yourself. Speak some Serbian, but you know, if you want to express yourself better, speak in English. So I was like, fantastic so i was allowed to do that <laughs> and that made that was actually that that was that was great because i got to be myself yeah and there's something that's very rare to for me to do that here in front of the media because my server is not very good so i don't really speak much in the media here I, I i can do a lot of text but that doesn't really cover everything so I feel you. It's now like I managed to get with, with Farsi, you know, because I can't speak either. My native yeah. mother tongue, Farsi from Iran. So <laughs> I can hardly like, you know, speak a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It's frustrating, isn't it? It's really frustrating, especially someone in my position. Who's yeah, because a you can't articulate figure now and I can't yeah, express yeah. myself. It's really frustrating. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So I was able to do it. In, yeah, I was able to do it in English. Which, that was great. So obviously people are going to be upset that I don't speak the language, but people are understanding and they realize, okay, this is fine. You know, as long as he's saying some, you know, some good things, then this is great. And that's and that also relaxed me as well afterwards because I got to be myself on one of the biggest stages, stages in, a stage in Serbia. So that was a huge positive for me. And he asked me about crypto, which then opened up my my new life as uh, as as. As as in Bitcoin, in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah and i was really happy he asked me that and the way he asked me he asked me yeah he he asked me you know what you know, can we talk about crypto so when i heard the word crypto that got me going <laughs> I was like, no, 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 it's not about crypto. It's all about Perfect Bitcoin moment. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you killed it. <laughs> Thank you. I was really happy. It was happy really to good that you took a position and you, you know, and then, you know, made a clear, crystal clear position and your crystal clear statement 
it's either you know it's bitcoin or anything else is shit coin and yeah. you know and, and so in a way sort of yeah yeah i'm really happy about that um because i didn't realize those two or three minutes would uh what well, sort of did have a feeling they would be picked up by bicep bitcoins but not to the extent that it is getting attention and traction right now so i'm really humbled by it and and I'm really, you know, I want to thank uh, thank the Bitcoin community as well for uh, for being for being so so being so uh, well uh, accepting and warming and, and and excited about it like I am as well. And it's thanks to them that I became a Max Max Bitcoin Maxi. So yeah, really cool. Yeah, the plebs, the plebs, yeah, yeah, the plebs, really yeah. Unique, uh, <laughs> uh, proper uh, sort of what do you call it? Like uh, yeah, a, a, a very unique characteristics of the whole Bitcoin community and Bitcoin plebs. Um, so Philip, um, I want to talk to you about like, um, you know, I mean, you talk about this network that you, you're going to, you know, maybe initially uh, start a foundation, education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got all these people in the Bitcoin community, you know, would it be Samson Mao, Max Kaiser? Uh, so I think th I'm totally optimistic. I, I, I see this vision, you know, where, hey, who knows, you know, people are already asking me because, you know, we are in Austria, that, you know, this whole criminal thing that's going on with mandatory vaccination. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The whole process, it's, it's so sickening and so criminal, I think. But anyway, um, and there are more and more people thinking seriously about immigrating, about moving out of this country or any other country. And, uh, so and I think we are one, on the yeah, precipice sorry. of something. Do you think so? Yes. Well, the, well, first, one of the one of the things I spoke about in the Ivan Ivanovic show was is it's something that a, one of the, one of the reasons I moved back to Serbia as well was also to help to give people the and it's, it's almost set an example for other other diaspora Serbs around the world to say, hey, it's okay to move back to Serbia because Serbia is is going through a depopulation um, situation. It's a bit of a demographical. Uh, nightmare that there's a huge brain drain when people are educated here and they know better i say they know better mm, they want to make more money that they leave serbia and they go uh, and this has also been happening to serb to, to yugoslavia after the after the second world war with communism and most a lot of the monarchist um supporting people went and moved abroad the biggest population now outside of Serbia is in Canada, then you have big populations in America, Germany, Australia, UK, and Austria. And, and I think everywhere. we have 300,000 Serbs. And, sorry, I should say the biggest population is Austria, but that's almost <laughs> too close, too close, it's bordering. So, <laughs> but yes, sorry, I should Easy. say that Austria, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to say, I wanted to tell people, look, it's Serbia is 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 got so much potential right now. It's yeah, it's not it's not like those other developing the, the developed nations, but because of that, you have the potential to ch make things ch to change things here for the better, and make a better world, better world in the developed world, so to speak. Oops. And and also, look, I don't speak Serbian. I'm trying to learn as well. So if, if you don't, if some lot of the diaspora are speaking broken Serbian or no Serbian at all, so, but say, hey, look, you know, I, I, I'm doing it as well. So. Yeah, when it comes to to other to other people who are interested in Serbia, I'd say yes because of the potential over here for for change and for and for development in a good way. I'd say yeah, come 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 to Serbia. <laughs> Let's work together. This place is open for for foreigners to to, to come live here, and it's, and it's I think it's it's a, it's a it's a ground full of op I say opportunities, but it's. It's a it's an open culture to to, to everything I mean, and you. I, I think I've said enough there. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's exciting, and I'm really and I'm really optimistic about that. Fantastic, no, really fascinating. So, Philip, uh, just before we wrap this up, I mean, you know, when you you know, as yourself, you've gone already, you know, deeply into the rabbit hole of Bitcoin, and once you know, you read and listen yeah. and and do all this and think about it and imagine and really understand the power, the essence, and the fundamental uh, consequences that Bitcoin can bring. Uh, you know, when the when the soil is healthy, you know, when the roots are really healthy. I mean, what would you, what are, what are, what would be from your perspective in your vision, the second, if you want to call it second and third and fourth and so on, order effects of Bitcoin on society, for technology, for innovation, for prosperity, for the evolution of humanity, whatever. I think I mentioned this in uh, Daniel Prince's podcast, but I'm just so inspired by, by
by Bitcoin's time preference change of, of on, on life. That is to me, it's it's because that's is I mean it's beautiful and it's gonna change, it's gonna help um, humanity change for the better. So I could just see it if when we more more of us adopt Bitcoin and when more nations adopt Bitcoin, it's just gonna it's just gonna create such a better world for our children. That's something that's make that's giving me a huge I mean huge inspiration to do what I'm doing, and to work to work towards Bitcoin education and to 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 meet other Bitcoiners and to exchange to exchange with brilliant minds in the Bitcoin world and. Just to, as I said, to make a better world for our children. You know, you have you have a fifteen year old. I've got a four year old, and my yeah. world changed dramatically when uh, my, my 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 look on life changed dramatically when I had my son because I I realized you know I have I have, I have a human being to take care of, a beautiful yeah. boy to I'm take care of, and I don't mentioned. have anything. Yeah. It's, it totally I changes don't have anything. radically everything yeah. once you yeah. have a child. Yeah, exactly, and you need to secure the future for them exactly. as well mm -hmm. and this is not just for every and not, not for myself but for every parent out there yeah. and the world that we live in is not secure at the moment not at all yeah every you know everything's been taken away from us you know yeah. we don't have se security of property these days you know we're, we're engaging in stupid risky activities which <laughs> it's it's a joke what's happening right now, all because of this fiat system, and we're just descending further and further into into some crazy clown world. Yeah, and it's really truly really a clown world. I mean, you gotta laugh about it because yeah. sometimes I I don't sim some, seriously. I sometimes I don't know whether I'm, I should be crying or or laughing out loud because but yes, you need to that, keep that, sanity. Yeah. You know, but I think humor helps that for the sanity, and I think also humor does help with. Um, with calling out this the uh, the craziness out there as well yeah. i think one of the biggest tools that we have is is humor and bringing that brings a lot of light to, to to the problems and i like i don't know who said this quote but i've always thought this is great that um you know bad times create yeah. wise people <laughs> i like that hard times wise people no yeah Hard times, hard times create wise people. Wise people create good times. Good times create silly people. Silly people create hard times. <laughs> so, so okay. And we are definitely in the hard, silly people hard times. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So now we have to be the wise people, Bitcoiners, and we have to, <laughs> we have to uh, create good times. But make sure those good times remain for good and not have silly people. But that's what Bitcoin is so beautiful. I talk about the time preference aspect, aspect about it, but also the fact that Bitcoin is something that you can't change. You can't change a protocol. Exactly. It's as solid as one plus one equals two. Yeah. And you can't have small groups of people, individuals changing that at all and making it benefit them. You can't, so this is what's beautiful this about Bitcoin. Is really Bitcoin doesn't care. It's so yeah. unique in human history. It's unique. Yeah. Bitcoin doesn't care about you. Yeah. Meaning that Bitcoin treats the, the richest person in the world the same as the poorest person in the world because both are playing on the same playing field now and mm -hmm. that is just beautiful yeah. yeah and you know what the beautiful part of but when you think about you know this this evolution or uh, adoption phase or we don't even need mass adoption. we just need like three five maybe maximum of 10 percent of the whole population of the earth to really make this like viral and exponential and you know by orders of magnitude faster and yes you know that's that's all what we you need you just need that that tipping point, that tipping exactly. point, it can be 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30%, but that tipping point, we're getting towards that. I mean, I don't know what the, the full adoption of Bitcoin is around the world or people who own it, but, um, you know, it's growing. People to compare it to how the internet's growing and it's growing about the same speed or faster, but uh, that's, I mean, that's promising. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> It and really I think is that, really know, we're doing this time. for our children. I think it's you, you said something very That's important. It, yeah. We're doing this for our children, and you know, and I could have never imagined you know, to have a child in this kind of world, but uh, you know, we, I mean, uh, it's just you know, the she's uh, my daughter is like the soul of my life, the light of my love, you know. I mean, it's it's exactly it's, it's well, a that's what experience. keeps the world I think going, we can't is, even describe it, yeah. but. <laughs> That's what creates the what makes the world work in a in, 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 in a good place is love. Love is what makes children. Love is what keeps children in a healthy world. And love is what Bitcoin is as well. So it's beautiful, really. Beautifully said. <laughs> Bitcoin yeah. is just back. 
Bitcoin backs that. <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin backs love. Love backs Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. And we can't even imagine you know, what kind of impact is, it will have, you know, on, I mean, I'm not sure whether, uh, you know, I'm not even religious, but I'm, I think a deeply spiritual, I think you're, you're somehow also like, I, 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 I somehow think the way I, you know, I studied you a little bit is you have a little bit of religious background, mm -hmm. spiritual background, but I think it's important. I think we are on the precipice of something, let's just call it spiritual, uh, you know, uh, like finding ourselves uh, and, 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 and building a better world and, and really uh, living the ethos, you know, of, of, as you said, you know, of unconditional love and, and prosperity and abundance, you know, as Jeff Booth also talks about this. So, yes, yes. I think we're I going think to when you talk about, when you talk about um, the spirituality is something that we've been missing a lot in the last, in the last hundred years almost, well, especially since the, um, the Second World War, when the race towards te technology, which has been seen as one of the greatest advancements of humankind, but I also sometimes see it as one of the greatest um, step backs of humankind is missing that spir spirituality. And that is something key to... Uh, to what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is almost it's spiritual and it, it wakes up people's spiritualness as well. Um, religious beliefs and things like that, which I think is really healthy for society because it gives good uh, ideologies. It, gives, uh, it, it makes for good families and makes for good societies, good communities. And I mean, look at, uh, it's, I think that's one of the most important parts. If you look at, um, I, mean, I take an example of some, beautiful architecture that used to happen in um, up until before the, the adoption of fiat 1913 was was some of the most incredible architecture happened because of because of technology innovation and because of spirituality and you had this incredible incredible architecture from um, in these beautiful churches and things like that and nowadays the architecture is beautiful and modern stuff but it's missing that spirituality yeah I think there's something there that I'm trying to get to. I'm not quite sure yet, but this is a thought I've been having recently. And and yeah, it just it just makes. I mean, you have to, it just have to have those morals and, and ethics yeah. and ethos. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. the right the ethos is yeah, to, uh, not taught to you, but just handed over to you, which makes 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 the world just a better place. I think. Beautiful said. And, no, it's, uh, it's one of the most fascinating. And I think the last. Yeah, the last the last 30, 40 years have been the uh, you know the, the the powers that be are trying to destroy people using that spirituality, turning the spirit, turn, it's turning people's religions against against other another. And that's yeah, you just need to horrible. listen to yeah. all these you know puppets or whatever these these technocratic scientists of a World Economic Forum, Harari or whatever. I mean, it's it's yeah, mind boggling it's, what they're what they're saying. What, what, it's yeah, it's really disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting. You know, like. We are like animals. We can just be hacked, and you know we have no spiritual, we have no soul. And I mean, I couldn't. I, I, I because wouldn't, he I just was, read. He because he he wrote one of the most be, best, uh, biggest um, uh, books, uh, one of the best sellers in the world. You know, Sapiens, mm -hmm. and people are saying, "Oh, he's a genius. He's a genius." I got to say that some of the stuff he said in that Sapiens is actually quite quite intelligent because he is an intelligent man. But he's he's not he's not he's not on he's not on he's not on humanity's side. Put it that way. And going back to the um, religions getting along, uh, for example, it can happen. It happens all the time. You know, you in I give the example of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is made up with, of uh, was made up of states that contained three big religions. You had the Orthodox, you had the Catholics, and you had Muslims, and they all got along together very well there. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed this conversation, uh, Philip. It was uh, really likewise lots to learn about lots to think about so uh, it, is there anything like important we uh, sh we should have mentioned uh, or you want to like um, um, uh, uh, tell my listeners about well yeah thank you for <laughs> thank you for being into the bitcoin thank <laughs> and you. thank you for teaching me about bitcoin and i look forward to working with with all of you on exciting projects and 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 a, and a better life for 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 us all really so i just wanted to finish with that well thank you appreciate it where can people find you philip again and or any other platforms uh, yeah uh so i'll release the website soon that which will which will be announced on my twitter my twitter is at prince with that's p r i n c f i L I P one Prince Philip. The mm -hmm. prince does not have an E. Yeah. 
and Philip with a with an F and, and a one. And I will uh, I will I will uh, release my um, announce my my website like soon. The foundation soon will be taking donations in Bitcoin and hope yeah you know, we'll be working on projects that will involve Bitcoin and 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 anything anything good for we talking about this 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 great show. Well, thank you so much for all your work and, you know, your ethos and, you know, your commitment to this because, you know, we're doing this again for our future, for our children's future. And uh, yeah, hope to do this uh, sometime in the near future. And I can't wait, you know. Yeah, I'd love to be back on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank Felix, you so much for weekend. having me on. Really, it was you too. It was a great talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.